As I prepare to hand over Singapore in good order to my successor, I feel a sense of satisfaction and completeness. I've done my duty, and I'm very happy that I chose this path of public service all those many years ago. And to all of you, I say a very big thank you. How about a rousing round of applause? Yes! I have spoken at almost every May Day rally since I became PM in 2004. This will be my last major speech as PM before I hand over to DPM Lawrence Wong on the 15th of May. The next chapter of the Singapore story is off to a strong start. The world has changed, and we must come up with updated, creative responses. But some hard truths have not changed. And these imperatives will stay relevant in the years ahead. So let me highlight three of them to you. First imperative, social cohesion. What do I mean? Race, language, and religion. And these are the traditional fault lines in our society. We can't disavow our diverse ethnic roots and religious affinities. We want to keep them. Chinese Singaporeans have links with China, some way or other. Indian Singaporeans with their various ancestral homes in India. Malay Singaporeans with the rest of our region and with a global Muslim Ummah the community of Muslims worldwide. These are real, emotional, historical, cultural, deep ties. They can be vulnerabilities, yet we do not want to lose these rich cultural and historical heritages. We've inherited them from our forefathers, and they contribute much to our Singaporean identity, our sense of who we are in the world. Therefore, for us, racial and religious harmony will always be a continuing work in progress. Never think that we have solved the problem and that we've left it behind. It will always be with us, and we also have to be conscious of other potential divisions in our society. Between the haves and the have-nots, the Singaporean born and naturalized citizens, conservatives and liberals, current and future generations. All these differences can be exploited politically to pit Singaporeans one against another and divide and weaken us. Hence, we've got to continue to work hard to overcome social stresses and tensions, to enlarge our common space and strengthen our shared Singaporean identity. It's not a static identity. It grows, it evolves over time. We have to guide that evolution as best we can, sensitively and thoughtfully. We we'll always have fault lines to watch and mine, never forget. Whatever our differences, we are all Singaporeans, first and foremost. And only thus can we survive and thrive in a contested and fractured world. Second, Long-term planning. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew memorably said, shortly after independence, over 100 years ago, this was a mud flat, swamp. Today, this is a modern city. Ten years from now, this will be a metropolis. Never fear. And this must forever be our mindset. Thinking long-term, working towards it with patience and determination and building lasting strengths for Singapore, way beyond our own generation for the next 50 years, for the next 100 years. This brings me to the third fundamental principle, imperative, political stability and trust. We cannot sustain long-term planning and effort if our politics is fractured. 
Getting our politics right is absolutely crucial. Please understand, we have succeeded and Singapore has made exceptional economic and social gains because our system is exceptional. The system doesn't have to fail outright for Singapore to get into trouble. Even if we just become ordinary, average, we will already be in serious trouble. Graver still, if our system malfunctions, becomes beset by populism, tribalism, nativism, or obsessed by short-term gains like some other countries, then we will certainly be sunk. All our reserves will not last very long, nor will they count for much. Therefore, it's crucial that all of us uphold this ethos of exceptionalism and excellence. It's crucial that we maintain political stability. The system will evolve with time, but it has to evolve in a way that continues to serve Singapore's interests, serve your interests. And that gives us the best shot of building a brighter future for Singapore. And we have built a strong foundation for our future generations, with adequate reserves to tide over extreme difficulties, with international respect that gives us a seat at the table, with a cohesive society that hangs together in the darkest hours and a vibrant and inclusive economy that creates opportunities and hope for all Singaporeans. Make the most of these advantages. Never throw them away. Stay united. Think long term. Maintain our political stability. That is the way forward for Singapore. My fellow Singaporeans, this is my 40th year in politics. It's been my great honour to have served you, including as your Prime Minister. As I prepare to hand over Singapore in good order to my successor, I feel a sense of satisfaction and completeness. I have done my duty and I'm very happy that I chose this path of public service all those many years ago. But leading a country is never a one-man job. It's always the effort of a national team. Your unwavering support enabled us to get here with the country in good shape and heading in the right direction. I'm deeply grateful to the ministers, MPs and grassroots and union leaders who stood with me throughout, more than one generation of them, some of whom have already passed on. To our outstanding public service, committed to improving Singaporeans' lives. To the labour movement, working tirelessly to improve the everyday lives of workers and their families. Most of all, I'm humbled by and grateful for Singaporeans' trust, confidence and support. And to all of you, I say a very big thank you.